so we held uh, uh, this LARP Dublin 2 in, in Helsinki city center last year. And uh, I couldn't talk about the interaction between like uh, citizens and uh, LARPers in this, in this game. So uh, we had uh, like a few goals with the citizens. It was kind of that uh, uh, they can kind of uh, yeah, the citizens can kind of uh, uh, meet asylum seekers. This LARP was about asylum seekers. Meet asylum seekers uh, via role characters of LARPers. So uh, they could meet them like uh, in the city center and uh, hear their stories and, uh, and reflect that their relation to this subject like uh, via these role characters. And then uh, also to give a player's kind of hint what is to be like a totally outsider uh, because they were playing game world and then uh, the world where they were playing was like a totally different with different rules. And we have a kind of uh, uh, idea that uh, we, we gave the citizens like a program leaflet that explained what is this play about or this play. And uh, uh, the players interacted with citizens mostly by trading. So they were kind of, uh, the idea was that they were in migrant camp in Southern Europe and uh, they trade like a condoms, uh, oranges and chocolate with people, citizens. And we had this kind of play money uh, which was used for this and players used this money for, for daily costs and, uh, and to pay the smugglers to get like further to more stable, stable Europe. And... Uh, <laughs> Hmm. So, uh, it was kind of uh, controversial for players. It was that the many find it really interesting that they really, in this, it was in the city center, they met kind of real asylum seekers who came, passed by and we're asking what you're doing, and uh, the players told that uh, we, are, we are presenting you, or, or something like this. And they met re really different kind of persons, and uh, uh, many players still told that it, it took a lot of strength to do that, that uh, you need to, you know, you were playing with your, with your partners, and then, then at the second moment you were talking to some citizens who, who just asked what is going on, and like this. So it was kind of a... Some said it took a lot of power, some said that the, it was the most interesting in the whole game. And uh, also some like uh, drunken people passed by this area and uh, it was uh, also maybe uh, gave the players a little hint like uh, how it is to be be very outsider, outsider from the society and uh, yeah. And uh, and uh, also I heard from some citizens that uh, they told that uh, it was kind of uh, they they read from media from this concept and when they came by uh, they uh, when they could experience this uh, or how they understood this game was that that they actually started playing and and by this they they uh, really understood it so they kind of citizens used this LARP also even though they were not in the game. Uh -huh. What has happened? Okay, now I talk without slides then. This was the mistake. Yeah, I have to, they're missing. Okay, so I change, I start, I continue without slides. <laughs> okay, then, um, mm, so we, also the citizens, we had like a lot of other people outside the game. We had a kind of uh, theater group, we had a lawyer, real lawyer, working with the uh, asylum seekers. We have different NGOs, journalists, uh, and uh, also people who were working businesses nearby this area we were playing. And uh, we, we tried to 
with this with this co collaborators we try to give the players chance to understand uh, understand to get to know like uh, the the organizations who are working with migrants and uh, to get to know know the subject more deeply and then uh, and uh, <laughs> and uh, also for these organizations and people uh, to reflect their work because they were now in in a kind of playing uh, what they really are doing for work, but now they were kind of playing that, so they could uh, like uh, use that role maybe to find some other side from themselves and uh, and uh, and play 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 the <laughs> play themselves in a way, and uh, maybe bigger step, uh, and it was kind of uh, also this. With these NGOs and uh, and lawyers, we tried to make uh, this game more real. And uh, this theater group that we asked to come to this game was maybe the most like authentic thing that happened. That uh, they came came to came to this area like uh, yelling, and uh, we we asked them that, that they play like an angry fascist from Southern Europe, and they attacked the camp. And they they came to this area, and uh, people were really like uh, outside. There were many terraces, and they thought that there's really like a happening some kind of real fight. And some people, one one guy came from terrace and uh, was that uh, I want to join you, that I want to attack these people who are there. And some other people came and said that uh, no, no, we want to defend, we want to defend these people. And uh, and uh, then they went to camp and tear it down, and uh, then. Um, a mm, lot of people came and, and, and they thought that there's real fight, there's really like a tension in the area and uh, uh, and we, we had got a security guards and organizers and then we, we explained to people that this is just a play, not real. And uh, and also the this this theater group, the violence was simulated by slow motion. So when they when they started to have physical contact the people understood that this is just a play. Uh, yes. So uh, then there were like businesses around the area, and the players could like go to these uh, places and um, to work as a, like a illegal migrant and uh, do some like was windows and this kind of stuff, and uh, they could earn like a game money, game money for this, and uh, it was for players that they little understand. Understood like uh, this kind of work that how is it to clean or or do this kind of stuff and uh, and also for the shopkeepers they like uh, uh, they got kind of um, could use their own role uh, this time also that they could find them from themselves kind of other side that the, for example one shopkeeper was like uh, very angry very rude and uh, he really maybe enjoyed that work that he could. Normally in work he couldn't do that, but now, now when he was LARPing in a way he, he could do that. So in this case also the the uh, workers in those those shops could like uh, use LARP in a way, in a way to s reflect themselves. And uh, then we had a kind of um, NGOs like Red Cross. Uh, volunteer for kind of uh, free movement network, which is kind of no border network in Finland, and uh, they were uh, like uh, showing how they work with with migrants, and uh, and uh, for them it was kind of uh, dry work in a way that they could they could uh, also reflect their own work. And uh, and for players, it was like uh, that they they get to know these organizations and uh, and uh, these organizations are really important part of uh, life of asylum seekers. So it was it was it support the authenticity of of the project. And then uh, then we had a uh, yeah this lawyer. Lawyer was very interesting because uh, he worked with uh, refugees a lot, and we had a kind of hearings of migration board and and this kind of stuff in the game. And uh, lawyer like uh, he told uh, told that uh, he was really surprised how how uh, truthful the the characters were, 
and uh, he um, and I started to think that later that uh, it was interesting because uh, uh, he also said that he could reflect his own work, but the, uh, I started to think that the, how he found the characters so truthful. I mean, he, he knew he worked many years with asylum seekers and then role players were suddenly very truthful. So, so I was thinking that was it that the, he went so deep into his like a uh, normal role in this that the, he thought that that people who just studied their character one year and one year, one month or something could be like a uh, real asylum seekers or I don't know. It was interesting, interesting like a uh, thing in this getting into role. And then we had a journalist also that the, in this game that we invited from media journalists to to participate in the game as themselves or as a, like a, one was a, like a refugee character. He played the, she played like a, a one and a half day in this game. And, uh, and, and. Uh, for them it was kind of, uh, for players it was again this uh, authenticity and uh, because uh, many refugees face like a journalist who come to take photos from them and, and and like uh, make reportages, but nothing really changed. But the, for journalists, it was kind of also also a way to reflect their own work, but but the same time um, uh, kind of um, uh, to get deeper in the subject without without traveling to Italy or Greece or or somewhere and visiting refugee camps or go to refugee reception center as and ask for people to interview. So this simulation was kind of an easier way for them to get know with the subject. So I'm really sorry about the slides. Uh, I, but yes. <laughs> so that's, that's all I have to say now. Yes. Thank you. <laughs>